next to her. Because <laughs> I know no one will throw one at her. Good luck. Good luck to you, sir. <laughs> trolling of Darth Maul, though. Every year, Heidi threatens, oh, this is the year I'm going to do on the con. And then I get up on stage because she gets nervous. So oh, that's, uh, not true. that's not entirely true. She's going to do more this year than she has in the past. Um, that's not to say she doesn't do a lot of work. It's just I'm the one who gets to be the talking head, which confuses people because they're like, you're the person who runs Shmoo Con. I'm like, oh, no, I am not. It's way above my pay grade. Um, so uh, this is on the con. Bruce hasn't seen any of these slides. I mean, now this is. <laughs> Except for the fact that 90% of the words are the same, so um, I think are we, we're spinning in the back, right? We're all hot? Okay. Um, <laughs> we're all hot. So for those that... <laughs> You're hot. See how I get these questions answered for me? I get my validation. You know, I ask, are we hot? People think it's about the... No, it's really about how sexy I am. Um, wow, chokes are falling flat already. This is good. <laughs> this started the whole thing. Um, for those that don't know... Uh, we run Own the Con. We've been doing this for eight years where we disclose all the information. Actually, maybe we've been doing it the whole time. I don't remember. We Shmoo did do it the first year. ShmooCon 1 is kind just, of far in the back. We just didn't use these we slides. We didn't use these the slides. Um, and these slides are actually cut and pasted from Keynote and then into PowerPoint and then saved as PowerPoint X. So there's like literally no graphics, but I think it's like a 10 gig file now. Um, <laughs> and it's corrupt all the time. Uh, so um, we run Own the Con in an effort to provide information to the community. Uh, in order to help people who are looking to run their own conferences, also to validate the work that we've done. You spend money, you spend time hitting F5, trying to come here or whatever, you should know what you got for your time and your effort. And so uh, this is kind of a procedural thing. We'll take questions from the audience, but part of this is to capture this for posterity. We want it online for people to be able to download later. We want the, the talk, the presentation itself to be online. And there's a lot of stuff we want to make sure that we get through just to make sure that it's captured. Because again, if you're not at the con, um, the only record that you have of what happened is the online material. So um, there's a lot of numbers here. Some of it may not be interesting. Hopefully you find it interesting. We do. Um, but at the end of the day, um, this is for you and the greater community. So uh, that said, we're going to go through and talk a little bit about our structure. Uh, we are an LLC. We're not a 501c3. Um, 501c3s are a fair bit of work. Um, I hope we bored the first two people already. Bye, sirs. Uh, take care. <laughs> See the party. Uh, it, it turns out I've actually done that to a few people that I shouldn't have done it to. Uh, found out later who they were and I'm like, oops, sorry. <laughs> um, and I probably shouldn't do it in I'm sorry, guys. You set my apologies? I got a salute, I guess. Okay, we're good. All right, we're square. For posterity, that's been saved. Um, it turns out that LLCs, especially in the state of Maryland where we're incorporated, are super easy to do. Um, they don't require any kind of board, they don't require any kind of pop and circumstance or special filing, except for the filing that you do every year in April called your taxes. Um, and they rain down upon us, um, in particular our personal returns. So our personal returns are a mess because I also own another LLC, that's my regular company, and so my personal returns make my accountant very happy because it keeps them busy. Um, it's uh, not complicated. Um, how many people have been involved with the 501c3? How many people have been involved in setting up a 501c3? Was it fun? No. no, it's not. Was it fun to run them? I mean, it's a good mission, right? I mean, you run a nonprofit and it's a good mission, but um, frankly, we'd rather just kind of pay the tax and not get the advantages and not have all the overhead because we have other things to do, like raise our kids and run an actual company. So, um, organizational structure. Again, this is the same as last year um, and many years before it. Uh, we do most of our planning on email, some via phone. 
uh, the Shmoo group where this all originally came from. It was a very distributed group of people. We had people in Alaska, California, Washington, Virginia, other countries. Um, we didn't get together maybe at DEF CON. Like that was usually like the grand Shmoo meetup was at DEF CON each year. So we were very used to the gate and process of working in email. Now, what works for us may not work for you. I know other conferences that meet in IRC, you know, you have big telecons, whatever it is, you know, but this is what works for us. Um, and we find we stay pretty focused on task. You know, there isn't a lot of banter about which, you know, uh, things that aren't related to con because email, I guess, is antiquated now. We'll soon go the way of, I don't know, Gopher and Usenet or something. Um, we do have, I am just bombing, it's terrible. I've made the Gopher joke already this week, so people are like, whatever, Gopher was funny yesterday. It's not funny today. It's still funny today. Thank you, man, I appreciate it. Well, good. It's funny every day. Yeah, that's the, well, you and I may be of a different generation, in fairness. Although you're a proficient tweeter, so, <laughs> Twitterer, Twiddler, I don't really know. Um, <laughs> I won't. <laughs> we just went there last night. Um, so the, so the, we have a number of mailing lists, and we segregated up, you know, so to keep get to the good stuff. Uh, conversation venue. So here's the deal. Running a conference in D.C. has some complications. One, hotels are kind of expensive. It's hard to find one that's a sufficient size to hold 1,700, 2,000-ish people. But on an inauguration year, an interesting thing happens. Um, the inauguration pushes all events to the side. So it's not that we conflicted with the inauguration. It's the fact that there's about two weeks less in the year to plan events that you're going to have in D.C. So, um, and in particular, when you're at the Washington Hilton, they are the only official actual presidential ball. Um, and so they may even have a little bit more drift than other hotels do when it comes to inauguration time. So we're back in the Hilton next year. We signed the contract in like late 2011, I think, for the 2014 event at the Hilton. We were actually trying to plan ahead, but 2013 was a blank. There's no way to get in the Hilton. So there's a couple of hotels, a couple of Hyatts and other places, and we ended up here. Um, so we'll be back in the Hilton next year. And then we'll see where we go from there. We've had good feedback from our, our experience here. We've also had good feedback from the Hilton, and there's other places we're going to look at as well. Um, so, just so you're clear, you know, how many people have been to DEF CON, Black Hat? When's DEF CON? Uh, yeah, last weekend in July, first weekend in August, right? Like clockwork, you know. And Schmoo Con. Uh, and you know, Super Bowl weekend, Valentine's Day, first day of spring, you January. know. January. Sometimes in March. Yeah, it, we, we've moved around a lot. Um, we learn lessons from, frankly, when our kids get cranky that ShmooCon is scheduled right before or after their birthdays. Oops. Um, you know, when you have ShmooCon too early in, in January, we don't have Christmas. Oh, Oops. Next year. Uh, yeah, then, and next year it's pretty early. Um, so it, it, it's, it's difficult. And even um, it affects the CFP. You know, we have to see how the CFP responses in early and all that kind of stuff. So um, the date floats. Sorry, but that's a fact of life. Um, speaker selection. Um, like that, I said wee bit. A wee bit, just a, just a wee bit. It's a, a friend scotch. for our people from the kingdom, the United Kingdom, a scotch. Um, we have 197 submissions, a little bit down from last year, but not, not an appreciable amount. Um, we had a lot of talks come in the early bird, I think more this year than last year by a fair bit. A lot of people wanted to make the first round selection. How many talks did we accept in the first round? I want to say four. Um, four, or five. <laughs> four or five. So um, it wasn't a huge advantage to come in early. We asked people to come in early. Frankly, it makes the CFPs, the uh, program committee's life easier, but it isn't something that um, I think we've biased toward before. Um, but it, as we get more talks, maybe there will be bias. Um, we used OpenConf again. It's an open source conference management tool. Um, it's kind of hard to Google for sometimes because there's several things called OpenConf. Um, but if you Google OpenConf conference management, you'll find it. They have a paid version which actually does lots of useful stuff that I think in the last few years we've been kind of manually generating lists and writing scripts to send things and all kinds of crap. Um, and I think we're done with that. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, we're gonna pay <laughs> for the full version this coming year because it turns out it, some of that minutiae, we just, it's easier just to pay to get it out from underneath it. So um, we have a small, I guess, you know, 14 people uh, selection committee this year. Um, and uh, a dedicated group of people had a handful of them read every single talk that came in. It's a lot of work. Um, how many people submitted at the con? <laughs> well, Carson is really excited. Carson, did you get accepted? Yeah. Yeah, so that's why he was so excited. He was very excited. <laughs> um, so what's interesting... Um, Carson was the first time speaker. Carson was the first time speaker. Congratulations. Many time listener, first time speaker. Yay, go Carson! 
And he still had to care. Did you take pictures while you were on stage? Did you really? You're not supposed to. Throw them out. Throw them out. That's it. You're out. Oh, you. Okay. That's a big ass lens to take pictures of yourself. Let me. A, a self shot. Um, so, um, what's interesting is even, I mean, our submission process isn't complicated, actually, and, but based on our panel yesterday, it may become a little more complex to give us a better feeling for vetting some of these talks. Even when all you have is an abstract and detailed outline, um, it, it's a um, lot of work to read 200 of these things and try to provide feedback and try to score it and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, we, we do our best to be as honest as we can. But I know, like, I'll get in a rut when I'm reviewing. I'll review, like, 20 in a row, and either I'm really optimistic, oh, this talk is about unicorns, we should accept it. Like, there's no technical content at all, but it seems like a good idea because I'm wasted. Or I'm super grumpy and read, like, the eighth submission that looks exactly the same in a row, I'm like, reject, reject, and I'm like, I just, no. I Bruce take a break was really tonight. happy this year. He liked everything. I did like a lot of talks. I was very, um, except for a few that I did not like, and then noise yelled at me, and other people yelled at me, and then he corrected it all, so it was all better. <laughs> um, stats. Um, we have different numbers on these two slides. We do? Perfect. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes, Mohawk Keith. Sometimes. So the question for those playing along at home is do we ever go out and hunt down speakers because of a tool or some other thing that they have? Yes, sometimes. In summary, Don't ask me to yes. name any right now, but yes. The, the, the keynotes that we've had and the panels that we have, we've gone out and found. And, and sometimes we haven't. And sometimes, sometimes they come to us, you know, and sometimes we pick the keynote out of the pool. Which it really just depends. They come to us and say, hey, keynote. Yeah. Um, and, but we've been known to pick the keynote out of the CFP submission. Right, and say this looks really good and we're just going to grab it. This is the correct number, by the way. 202, okay. Yes. Uh, Still and so, down from last year, though. I think what, one of the things that's uh, interesting is, uh, you know, we try to, like I, I kind of mentioned this yesterday, we try to do the best thing for the community with our talk selection. Um, so, you know, I think we, we, we are definitely uh, biased toward things that are new. We're definitely trying to do things we think are going to be of benefit to you. Um, and I think it makes our program committee eye things a little bit differently than what we see otherwise. So we may not hunt things out. I think that we do have a different tack to get to our selection process than other organizations do. Um, it was a, you know, 17 to 18 percent acceptance, which actually puts us in a kind of an interesting area. I mean, that's a pretty low acceptance rate, all things being equal. So there's a lot of, I was talking to someone, or a speaker that didn't make it earlier today, I'm like, it's amazing the talks that you review. You think this is a good talk, this is a good talk, this is a good talk, and then you look at it at the end, and the talks that didn't make the cut are there's some good material there. And then fire, you know, fire talks picked up some of them. Other places they end up at other conferences. So I think the good material still shows up, just not, not here. Um, we had a breakdown: 221 male, 16 female, and one one bear. I'll give you one guess which bear it was. Thank you. In particular, the DEFCON version. Um, Although he actually retracted the talk, so I'm not sure what okay. happened. Um, if he decided he didn't want the publicity, because the DEF CON pedo bear just, you know, he, he abhors publicity. Did he, retract the talk? he did retract uh, the talk. I don't know. Oh. Um, so what's interesting about this is that this percentage of, you know, again, best guess female to male um, submissions is coincidentally the same or darn near the same percentage of what we actually accepted on our stages this year. So I thought that was cool because we didn't plan for it, we didn't try for it, it just sort of happened. Yeah, the ratio ends up being about the same um, in the accepted talks to the submitted talks for, for male to female. And this is, uh, as pointed out, just kind of a guess on names. It's not to say it's 100% correct, but it's in the right, Aaron can right be order. Kind of, you know, we don't know sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. until they get here. So. Right. Um, a number of talks, uh, most talks came in on our new track, we'll lay it. Um, and I think part of that may have been there were some break it kind of people who thought, well, break it's not there, but maybe they'll, if I just submit it or belay it, like they'll just pretend that break it's still there. <laughs> there was a lot of offensive stuff submitted uh, under belay it. Speaking of uh, some more talk breakdowns, um, you can see the trend in talk submissions. Again, we were on a nice upward slope for a while, but I guess, I don't know, February, DC, who knows. Um, we do this breakdown here, uh, and this is kind of an eye chart. Um, uh, the blue is hardware and electronics. The uh, green is defensive, the uh, yellow is offensive, and there's a big miscellaneous category. Um, you can make other categorizations, but they end up being very sh tiny, so we just don't bother. We just bin them as miscellaneous. Um, and you can see, I mean, this year we did try to, you know, get a push for more defensive talks. We saw a greater ratio and a greater absolute number of defensive talks, lower ratio and lower absolute number of offensive talks. So, um, you know, a, a little bit of a nudge 
got us some progress. We're going to keep nudging in that direction and see what it gets us um, next year. Um, here's the uh, number of accepted talks um, compared. So again, defensive, uh, offensive, uh, miscellaneous, and hardware from that would be right to left because people read right to left. Um, so again, we accepted actually way more defensive talks this year than in years past. So we were certainly biased and we were real about our, our you know, kind of threat, if you will, that we're going to focus more on defense than we have in the past. So, um, and I wouldn't even say this was necessarily intentional. Like at the end of the day, I don't think we sat down and said, we don't have enough defensive talks, we need more defensive talks. The program committee eyed the, the submissions this we year. We did introduce a new track. We did introduce a new track, but it, you know, we still had a lot of offensive submissions, but I think we had way more of an acceptance of defensive uh, um, talks based on the program committee's input, and I think that's because they just had that eye on the whole time. So. so it's hard to overstate this. Uh, how the heck, first of all, follow directions. I don't know if I put them on the slide. Um, I did. Oh, you did, thank you. Um, it, we don't have a complex process to submit. Um, and I'll admit, an annotated outline may be kind of a foreign concept to people, and we're going to provide example CFP submissions next year to help you understand what an annotated outline means when we ask for that. But it's not bullet point one, intro, bullet point two, all the talk material, bullet point three, closing. OK, is that good enough for you? No, under no circumstances is that good enough. Um, people don't put the talk title in, people don't put the name in. Um, it also makes it difficult on the back end when we're trying to gather the material out of your submission. You know, I want to open that submission and I want to see your bio as bullet number two. So I can quickly grab that. And if I'm having, sorry, if I'm having to dig through that, that just, I get cranky. It does. It makes, actually, across the board, if your bio isn't strong, if, if things aren't in place, it makes our life very difficult. Because when you multiply that times 10, times 20 for the people I'm that I'm looking at you, it, Scott Moulton. Um, uh, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, exactly. It's like little Scott Moulton. Yeah, we almost pulled, we almost made a bio up for you. Um, I did. It was happy. So, um, you know, I think it, it's, um, I think we took a harder line this year than years past about people that didn't follow directions. Like, if you didn't basically create a compliant response, we really didn't want to create a compliant response on our end. You know, it was like, you get a kind of a one. Um, it was a scale of one to six in OpenConf. So, you know, one is obviously not the best. You want the largest number possible, not the smallest. Um, put some effort into it. There were certainly some talks that I don't think the effort was put into, uh, or some submissions, excuse me, um, and, and it shows, um, especially as we got closer to the uh, first submission deadline, you know, that early submission deadline. There's some things that came in like 11.58 that I'm pretty certain was just someone's head rolling on the keyboard. All right, so let's talk about <laughs> that for a second, though, because, you know, at least a couple of those were came in because... Because what? <laughs> because what? I, I, what do who's we on do? first? I don't understand. I don't know. <laughs> who, who, who here knows what our super secret thing that we've done for the last few years for speakers who don't get accepted? I refuse to call them rejected speakers. Anybody? You get a barcode. You get, you get the ability barcode. to yeah, buy a barcode. Guess what? That's changing next year. And I'm not going to tell you how it's going to change, but it's changing next year. It's not just submit, don't get accepted, get in. So, yeah, think about that and uh, take it to heart. So, but we want good submissions. We want well thought out submissions. Um, and I think this goes, uh, uh, and I got, I, last night's panel, I don't know if we're, a lot of people checked out and were out eating, but- It was dinner time. It was dinner time. I think a lot of interesting things came out of it. And, and what, one of the things that fell out of it, I think, was that the conferences, these ad hoc, you know, hacker, you know, whatever community conferences are kind of a gatekeeper for information into the, you know, public knowledge into our corpus that we use every day to do our jobs. Um, and in the academic community, you have advisors, you have this whole process of review and things like that. We don't have that. And what it boils down to are program committees at conferences making the decision, yeah, this thing is worth, worthwhile getting on stage and this thing isn't. And it's kind of a, I mean, there's a lot of conferences, so you can shop around and usually get on stage even with a crappy idea, uh, to be frank. Um, but. I think that it's important to, for the program committee to understand kind of the, the weight put on their shoulders to say, this damn word better be a good talk because once they get on stage, people are probably going to believe it. Even if they get pelted with shmoo balls, 
you don't see that when you look at the presentation online, you just start citing it, right? Um, and so I think we're probably gonna end up with a more stringent CFP process to get a little more detail so we know, not necessarily fully baked research material, what it's gonna be, but to have a better ability to assess what's going on. Because we don't wanna do the wrong thing by letting people get on stage and say things that are incorrect or not fully baked or whatever. You know, sometimes not fully baked is okay because of the nature of the research, and sometimes it's because the person was flat out lazy, right? Um, and so there's a lot of responsibility there. So um, don't be surprised if there's a few changes. Sales model. Uh, the, the, the cart worked, man. Like, wow, it was freaking magic. The first round came through, it was November 1, and it was like, oh, we're done. And I'm not freaking out, and the data center's not on fire, and Twitter's not full of angry people that, well, half the people aren't angry because they got tickets, the other half of the people are angry because they didn't get tickets. Um, it is a, um, a super simple, single-threaded uh, app that runs on our um, one single box, server. single server, and it works great. Now here's the kicker. We still run all our back-end kind of uh, business logic. It's all Django-driven, which is what we tried to use originally to do the front-end sales. And what we found is uh, things like Django and these big frameworks are fantastic for all the day-to-day -day maintenance when Heidi has to issue tickets and revoke tickets and deal with the sponsors and convert all this stuff, like click, click, click. and you know, um, you know, Darth Null's been helping out with that. He's been fantastic at building an interface to, to help us with that. That's great. When it came time to scale that to actually sell tickets in the face of the crush, you know, uh, of people trying to hit the server, um, I know that uh, someone told me last night, they actually told me about their bot. I'm like, yeah, we hit it once a second for five seconds, and then we hit it with a 30 uh, uh, hits per second, um, and then we hit it once a uh, second for five seconds, then we hit it with 30 in a second, we just keep cycling through that. I couldn't figure out why, except I guess they were less of a jerk if they waited four seconds <laughs> and just hammered the server. Um, so it's clear that people are writing bots and beating the shit out of this thing, and Django just does not put up with that well. You know, we had six servers in a cluster, and like, I mean, my God, they were still getting destroyed. So um, our, our solution here to use a framework for the back end process and use some lightweight C thing for the front ends were great. We had this Capache in place, and the Capache wasn't like reading fuzzy letters. It was just proving our human, you know? Spell the word red, R-E-D, next. Okay, good. Um, and though I know some people got tripped up with don't click this, click that, and they click the, okay, as I recall, you may have been tripped up by that. Did you? I could have sworn that you tweeted. We can go back through the Twitter archives. I could have sworn that you clicked not on this where it said not on this. He wasn't the only one who maybe did or did not do that. How about okay. that? All right. <laughs> did or did. I don't think it was him. <laughs> Somebody in the back is raising their hand. I'll just pretend it's you. So, okay. Um, You're his proxy. Yeah, you can be my proxy. Um, so uh, there's a lot of stats here. I'm not going to go through it all. But um, I think one of the interesting things, and people, we saw a lot of feedback on what? Okay, a lot of feedback online about, oh, all these bots get all these tickets. I'm like, here's the deal. We try to develop a system that, at the front end, stops bots from being successful in reserving tickets. Secondarily, we isolate the reservation process from the sales process for two reasons. One, if the server is cratering, we don't want people trying to buy tickets through the same server because then you get all kinds of credit card transactions in weird states and credit card processors don't like that. They get really pissed off when we have to refund like $20,000 when we haven't done any business for the previous 11 months, right? That's something that makes them really nervous. But secondarily, we review all the transactions. There's that hour window or two hour window in between, and we're sitting there digging through the logs, looking at IPs, looking at emails, you know, and trying to understand where are the trends. Did anyone game us? Has somebody figured out something that we didn't account for and got 20 or 30 or 40 tickets? You know, and once it's all okay, you know, if there's any issues, we deal with the people that we have issues with, and the rest get released for purchase. So, you know, we spend time trying to validate, trying to make it as fair as we can to the live people that are sitting there clicking buttons. Yes, question. So the question is, um, I guess, it, it, how, first of all, how big are the online viewers and the real viewers kind of together? Andrea, do we have anybody in this channel right now? 68. 68. And that's, I've heard around 60, 70 people per track. Some of them have been a little higher today. So if you figure there's 180 people participating online, 
you know, a Saturday afternoon, that's, that's not too bad. Um, I think the question in my mind is where's the top end if you just had a wide open sales process? Um, well, I mean, you know, it's a venue problem at DEF CON too, and they just put people in it, right? <laughs> and then squeeze around the hallway. Um, and that's not to disparage DEF CON, it's just that's, I mean, a lot of people want to go to it, and it turns out maybe Vegas isn't even big enough. Um, <laughs> So, you know, I don't know where the top end is. Um, I know that there are certain uh, uh, groups of people that like whole companies want to come and they can send two out of like 20, you know. So I know there's a, there's a lot more potential, but, um, you know, we've decided to keep it small and we'll get into that in a little bit here in a second. Um, we're, we're small as 1,700 people, you know, it's, I guess it's relative. Um, this year we had 1607 out of 1662 checked in. Uh, that's a, a, a really fantastic uh, um, rate. Uh, last year we were pretty close. I don't know why we said by far lowest when the year before was actually. I think that was there from last year. Like I said, I updated. All right, yeah. We changed numbers. It's got a roll. It's the numbers are yeah, basically correct. You know, it's mostly so. recycled. If it's quasi. -trans. Look, it's late Saturday. Yeah. Um, Usually we're doing it late Sunday. So compared to the Snowmageddon year, where we had a fairly large number of no-shows, this year has been very relatively few no-shows. Um, so um, uh, we had about 58 speakers, 70 staff, 10-ish press, equals about 1,700 people. Um, press and or there's a difference between air quotes yes. and press. How, how many press were there? I'm not not even going to go there. This is this is a conversation that has no good ending. Um, so, but I think it's interesting, this venue, when we toured it, I don't know that we had a sense of how well it would work for this many people, especially down at the bottom here and stuff, and transitioning between talks. What was people's feeling? Did it work out for the size pretty well? Or? Not horrible. Not horrible. Yeah, right? That's a ringing endorsement. Okay. Uh, I've been able to walk everywhere I've wanted to walk. Yeah. That's good. I, I hate that you had to crawl. <laughs> I, I think my, my, my employee reviews are usually something like, well, he did an adequate job, I guess. Uh, so, um, that was Jeff's. Is that a view? Yeah. Uh, so um, anyway, I think the space worked out pretty well for 1,700 people. You know, and the Hilton has different issues at 2,000 people than this did, uh, but I think it worked out pretty well. Um, oh, yeah, have fun. Yeah, thanks. So some of you don't like it when tickets get sold on eBay. I've heard. Um, first of all, we don't control what people do with their tickets. That's not our game. You don't have to show up here to show ID. Um, well, you, some of you do. Well, some of you do. Yeah. Like rejected speakers because we don't want you to transfer. Speakers who weren't accepted. Speakers who weren't accepted. <laughs> Potential speakers. Non-positive answered speakers. Um, I, don't, I don't even have anything good for that. I don't um, Okay, so um, some people have to show up and show ID, but for the vast majority of you, you show up your little thing scans and you get a thing. We don't care who you are, right? Um, I actually asked one of the guys I knew, I saw like one of his tickets get redeemed and it wasn't him. And I was like, well, that's odd. And I found him later and he'd give it to a friend. But um, <laughs> it, people can do whatever the hell they want with it. They can barter them, they can sell them, they can give them away, we don't care. Um, now, eBay's a different deal because there's a feeling that, you know, that's the marketplace for second uh, secondhand sales. Um, people maybe just be buying tickets to resell on the eBay market, uh, you know, and that's, Whatever, that's their prerogative, that's your prerogative to buy it. Our stance, and we made it very clear this year, we will not validate sales that move across eBay. Um, it's first come, first serve for the person that shows up with the barcode. So if the guy, whoever's selling it on eBay, sells the same barcode 10 times, whoever shows up first wins. Um, not our problem. It's an issue you take up with eBay, PayPal, and your local law enforcement, or whoever the hell you want to go complain to about something they're not going to care about. Um, <laughs> we saw year over year, one and a half, two, two and a half percent of tickets move across eBay. Um, now one thing we will do is if you want to do an at face value uh, sale, we have a list of people who want to go to the con and if you don't want to go or you can't go or whatever, we'll broker the sale and we'll revoke your ticket and issue new tickets um, after the sale is completed. And um, we offered that this year formally on the website. Um, we kind of did it informally before, but we formally offered it this year. And honestly, I think we had a bigger turnout than we anticipated. It was a lot of work, I, I, yeah. It, but, you know. And, and we may have to actually have someone dedicated to doing that next year, because I think it's a, it's a good idea, because it's a safe way to sell them, um, and it doesn't you know, have the markup. Well, it where, protects the buyer. It protects the buyer, it protects the seller, and you don't it have people it. making money, making three or $400 on the sale of the ticket. That. Well, I guess they could be then extorting them on the side, and we don't know, but you know, come on. Only Keith would, I mean, I'm sorry. Oh, wait. <laughs> He's like, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> I don't give Keith a barcode. Yes, sir. Do you speak to or do you not like to comment on whether that sort of collision pops and wretch? Someone shows up and says, so, 
only. So the question is, has, have we had collisions before at registration where people show the same one? With the same barcode? Like someone says, here's my barcode. Sure, it actually, it well, so um, I don't even know if he's in the room, but if he's back at registration. Bob actually gave us tickets. He had two barcodes, and he gave them to his friends, and he accidentally sent the same one to the two guys, and of course, there was a second one. We've seen that happen. Usually, it's a mistake. Only one time um, last year did we have a, a bad barcode show up at the door. And I said on the, I don't know if any of you read the news post I made about it, but um, I couldn't remember at the time what I had done. And I'd actually, we turned him away, and then in the end I actually let him in because the guy had emailed me um, months previous and we'd had a discussion. And as much as I don't like to validate eBay sales, I had promised him I would validate the ticket. And then he had emailed me in the days before the con, and me being busy, I missed it completely. And he would have known prior to getting here. So I did make it right, and I let him in because I felt responsible. But that is the only time that we've had a bad barcode show. Right. And that kind of led to our hardline stance on, if you do it on eBay, not our problem. So makes it very simple. So not a lot of shenanigans in summary. <laughs> um, why do we stay the same size? How do I count the ways? Um, so one, we want to pres preserve the feel of the con. We like to think we're a small con. I'm not sure that 1,700 people qualifies as small, but um, it's small-ish, and and you have an experience where you meet new people, but you can see your friends too, you know. And I think that's you know that's important. Hi friends. Hi friends. Yes, we have a lot of friends. I find out I have a lot of friends around ticket sales time. Uh, <laughs> people on LinkedIn, like, hey, we worked together 20 years ago at like a Burger King, you know? Can you put me a ticket? He actually worked at Taco Bell, just to be clear. For three days. Three days. They were going to make him manager. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was the only guy not doing meth. So it was a very easy decision. <laughs> uh, the meth jokes, man, they hit every time. Thank God, Breaking Bad. Um, so it's difficult to find a space in DC that's a little bit bigger. It's easy to find space that's a lot bigger, handle 5,000 people or something like that. It's difficult to find like 2,500. And it seems weird, but you know, it just, it's, you can build a space like this under a hotel and hold 2,000 people. You can't, it's hard to build a space under a hotel that holds you know, three it, because you actually need like a half a city block to do that or even more. Um, and so we find this is an easy size for us to find in DC. Um, and, and to be frank with the logistics, it, it's a lot of work. Did you all see that picture I tweeted, you know, of me in the boxes? Yeah, no. that was my dining room. <laughs> She's sitting on pile, the pile of boxes going from floor to ceiling in our dining room, and she's like perched up on top of like a little cubby hole we made in the box. And then so, they didn't let me down. Um, <laughs> it was only half the dining room. It was only half the dining room. It was only the blankets. The boxes on the other side yeah. of the dining room. So it, it's it's a lot of work to deal, and it scales linearly. I mean, a lot of this does. Um, uh, I you know. I'm really happy I run my own company because I can just disappear for two weeks and I'm not going to get fired. Um, but, you know, Hadi's really full throttle for like a month and a half leading up to the con where it's wake up, work on ShmooCon stuff, go to bed. Um, about two weeks before the con, I start going to work at all and I get up, work on ShmooCon stuff and go to bed. And that's my life. And our kids just sit there and stare like pointing at the box of mac and cheese like, someone, someone can warm this up, please. Like, I'm going to burn myself again, please. Uh, um, As it stands this year, they're all sick. They were all sick, like the week before the con. Makes it extra exciting. Um, oh my god. Bronchitis. Uh, bronchitis <laughs> and the flu. Um, zero. Yeah, yes. if, you, if you get you sick. You blame us, it's okay. Absolutely, we're responsible for con flu I wash my hands a lot. Um, and even like small things, like in years past, we get all the bags delivered on pallets, and then are the bag distributor negotiated a new contract, and instead of shipping with freight, they ship with UPS. Not UPS freight, straight up UPS. We get, we get trucks. A UPS truck showed up and said, this whole thing's for you. I'm like, really? How is that possible? So, and the thing is, like, even that day I was getting ready, I felt bad. I'm like, I'm going to go to the office. And I was walking out the door to go walk to the office, and the UPS truck was, like, in front of me, and the guy's tapping his foot. And I'm like, I know what I'm doing for the next hour and a half, you know? And it's like, it, it's a lot of work. And I'm not trying to, you know, complain. I'm just saying, you know, people are like, don't, you should just get bigger. Well, a lot of people ask why we don't Buy me stage bigger house. It, yeah, or stage it someplace else. And that's just, that hasn't proved to be an option for us. Right, and even like we stage a lot of stuff at my office, which is, you know, for the guys that work for me, it's a mile away from my house. It's not far, but it's still not my house. And we have to like take the kids down there and go down and work, and people come in, and our office is about three feet wide and 30 feet tall. And so it's very it's awkward. It's a lot of glass. A lot of glass, a lot of stairs. You have like four flights of stairs in this little tiny building, and so things are just kind of everywhere, and it's not, a, there's no loading dock. It's all very difficult, and I'm, again, I'm not trying to complain, I'm just saying, like, if you it's want us to get bigger, we're not, you know? There's other cons. 
there's other cons that you can go to. We encourage you to start your own cons. That's why we're doing this. Like, please, and we put them in the programs. Go to other cons. Stop filling yeah, my garage. Just um, move all's back. Did people enjoy it? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, did I switch? <laughs> What? No, it's all that's that. No, you can't protect my pride now. I, I took that from you. Son of a bitch. Yeah, I'm, I'm trained like a puppy dog, man. Like I peed on that floor once, never again. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's a good idea. Um, you know, and uh, and we went over this at the opening. You know, it's there. The, it's hard to get something that's a instant feedback as a shimu ball, and it's fun. It's frivolous. And it's amazing how many places I go where people know about it and it compels them to speak, which I think is useful, you know? So take the concept forward, you know? It's the one thing we asked about the shmoo ball. It's not just a souvenir, it's an idea, right? You take it away from here and, you know, when someone's spouting bullshit, say bullshit, you know? Because sometimes it's not politically correct to throw things, but it's still politically correct to swear. So, you know. <laughs> um, so let's talk about money. Okay. Uh, your favorite part. So here, here is the gory details. Um, 118 in sponsors, 195 in ticket sales. That's where we get our money. Two line items, total $313,000. That's up from last year. That is up from last Just year. Just a little. Um, so we'll know this is what it takes to run a conference like this. Okay, we'll get to the goes out is here in a minute. This is the goes intense. Um, there's a lot of conferences you go to. I mean, uh, certainly the B sides, they're all free, right? And that's all through sponsor money. And um, sponsors got to pony up a lot of money to help B sides out. And, and God bless the sponsors and God bless the B sides volunteers for making do with you know what they have access to. It's fantastic. And on the flip side, you got you know other events that you know huge granddaddy type you know corporate events that take a thousands of dollars. You know, I like to think we offer very similar experiences to what you get for some multi thousand dollar conferences. Um, and it's interesting to see where the money goes. Well, they don't give food. They don't. Give, we don't give food. And in fairness, food's expensive. Anything you buy from the hotel, you know, Space Rogue Shot, um, whatever else you want to buy, it's, it's expensive stuff. Um, and so when you start serving food, like we could serve you all lunch and we would bump the price of the ticket up by 30 to $40 and that would just cover the cost, right? Barely. You know, barely, barely, right? Like the breakfast that we serve our staff is what, 20 odd bucks a head? No, it is, do you really want to know? Yeah, I can't remember. It's it's like 40 bucks a head. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like a continental breakfast, right? This is what this yeah, is how so they make their money. Good. The hotel likes us, but they don't, hey, you're having a dinner here like us, okay? <laughs> we fill up the rooms and you guys fill up the bar, but if we were to have a plated dinner, they would really like us. <laughs> and we would double the price of admission, so. No, we would triple the price of admission. <laughs> um, so here's what we spend. The space cost us 40 grand. And this is all, this is all, these numbers are all, See the little tilt. Well, they, they don't have tillies. Never mind. They this, should. This, these are these are guesses. I mean, they're not guesses. They're in the ballpark, but it's to give you an idea what it costs. Uh, we have to pay for the space. Not a lot. The rooms actually offset a lot of the coverage. When you guys, so the way that this works for the, those of you that don't know, when you go to a hotel, you do this negotiation, and they we say, how much is it going to cost to get all the space? And they say, how many rooms are you going to sell? <sighs> all right, let's start with 500. All right, for 500 dollars, it'll cost you. There are 500 room nights. It'll cost you this much money. What if we did 800 room nights? Well, it cost you this much money. Uh, you know, and you negotiate back and forth. The kicker is, if you miss the room night commitment, you owe the difference. And actually, if you miss 80% of the commitment. So if your commitment's 1,000 rooms and you sell less than 800, you're responsible for the fare of every room below 800. So if it's 160 nights, they're 160 dollars a night, and you miss it by 100 nights. This, I mean, general context. Yeah. Yeah, you owe a lot of money. So, um, you know, it, it, that's the way hotels work. So when this year we had no problem selling the block out, you know, for the record, the block here sold rapidly. And I think part of it's the, we still had November, December and January one for the ticket sales and the con was later and, um, cheaper. and cheaper. So we had uh, the space was cheaper. No, the hotel rooms. The whole hotel rooms are cheaper. So we sold out faster than we have in the past where the con's closer to the last ticket sales round and people don't haven't don't know if they're going yet. Um, so we sold out very early this year. We made our numbers. That was good. Uh, swag, $57,000, give or take, for all this stuff. And that includes um, the, the speaker swag and staff swag and that kind of stuff. I, think, I don't think I missed anything. So, I mean, that's... Again, back of ish. Nothing. This is this is ish, you know, and that if anything, um, that, number that includes up. the cost of the T-shirts that we've donated to EFF and uh, Hackers for Charity too. 
So, and we still get those printed from a small shop in my hometown where when I was a kid, my brothers and I drove forklifts downtown to lift up their screen printing stuff and put them into their shop. I mean, small little town, we take care of them. So if you need t-shirts printed, they do good quality work, they'll do your art for you. Sure Sureheads.com, um, there's, we plug them. About $1,000 in random prizes, um, 17,000 uh, in equipment, we'll get into that in the next. $35,000 party. <laughs> you haven't been to it yet, don't applaud. Um, so um, it's a large uh, che check to write, I'll be honest, for beer. Um, oh, it's more than beer. Oh, it's, it's more than beer, I guess. Shots. Shots, shots, shots yes. <laughs> Skydog's like, I paid 12 bucks yesterday, Sky I'm going to get Skydog. Space Rogue. It's not even really alliteration, is it? I mean, that was just wrong. It was just, I'm sorry, sir. That's all right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's a big party. Um, it's fun, and we negotiate, and we usually do it at the last minute. So the contract was signed. He wasn't trying to do no, that. No, well, I mean, it's how it works out. Um, speakers all get 200 bucks or a... Well, so that number is down from last year because we gave the option for the speakers to um, give up their honorarium, most of the speakers to give up the honorarium and instead get a plus one ticket. So um, Only, you know, whatever, half the speakers decide, less than half the speakers decide to get the honorarium this year. Uh, 4,000 and... You buy a lot of freaking tape, man. Like when it comes down to it, we buy a lot of tape. Like every time I go to Staples, like I need more packing tape. Seriously, like, holy crap. Um, credit card fees, 14k. So. And that 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 that's probably up. I haven't changed that number in four years. But it's probably pretty close. Now, if we went to a third party's ticket organization, that number would be much higher. Um, we finally beaten that problem, so I think we're actually comfortable. I think there were years in the past where we're like, it's time to let someone else deal with this, but I think we've kind of fixed it, so we're okay with that number. $300 for invent insurance. That number went down. We're a bunch of crazy fucks, to be frank. And the fact that someone will underwrite event insurance for this for $300, I'm like, are you missing some digits? Like, <laughs> Sure, as long as you're not serving alcohol or swimming, it's really cheap. So we don't serve the alcohol you buy from the hotel, that's their problem, and we sure as hell are not swimming. Uh, <laughs> I don't really have my bikini body ready yet, so. Um, thank you, at least one person was turned on by that idea. Um, and it wasn't me. And it wasn't <laughs> We sponsor other events, we pay quarterly taxes. When you get big enough, you have to pay the government quarterly instead of yearly, because they think you might not come back with all your money. That number's um, probably gone up too. And that number's, yeah, it's, that's just a look, wag. It's I mean, depressing. What, it is, it's a big number, as it turns out. That check, that check is particularly hard to write every year. So we're up to about 205K, which is a little bit higher than last year. Uh, we had to buy some gear. Um, the labs guys, I actually felt bad when I realized when I bought new servers for them last year. Um, I gave them these boxes that they're running all this virtualized stuff on, and I bought them boxes of like four gigs of RAM. Like, well, here you go, it's two Xeon processors, you got eight cores and, every, and four gigs of memory. And I was going through the mailing list, and they're like, all right, how many VMs can we run if we only do 386 gig, uh, megs of memory per VM? And I'm like, oh, God, I'm such a jerk. Um, so I ordered a lot of RAM and installed it in the servers, and I think it ran better this year. Yes. yes. Sim yeah, he's still angry from last year. Um, he wasn't here last year. One of our Mac Minis from Reg died, um, and so we replaced that. Uh, with these fancy projectors here, uh, they were $2,500 when we bought them new last year, and then we bought some new ones this year, and they were $2,493. <laughs> so they've gone down by seven bucks. It turns out they're very nice, like, prosumer projectors. And they're quite bright. Um, I mean, I know in years past when we were skimping on projectors, people were like, damn, the screen's kind of dark. And, and these things, we, I use these at home in broad daylight on the wall, and I can see just fine. Like, you know, we, we watch movies outside, and you can project them in the day. Um, it's pretty cool. We bought some laptops, a desktop, a bunch of other shit, um, and at least $150 of gaff tape. So, yeah, it's a lot of gaff tape. Gaff tape isn't cheap, as it turns out. Uh, there's money left over, you know, 100K, give or take. We've got some ideas for next year. And we say that, but it was pretty clear, I think, in the opening, things are changing a little bit. We're going to get serious about getting students here. We're going to get serious about preserving the information that's presented here in probably alternative ways. Um, you know, we're going we're gonna to change the way we do business. It's time. We've been doing this for nine years. We settled in. We got comfortable. It works. So let's make it not work and see if we can fix it again. <laughs> so bear with us. So very, yeah, I, I, I expect next year to be different, you know, to be frank. Um, the it's, same but different. It, it's, time to, it's time to stir the pot. And if you hate us for it, cool. At least we tried. So. You can throw things at us. You can. We, again, we <laughs> yeah, will encourage you. Can, you. you can throw things at us. Uh, network, you guys have some comments and numbers to give us? 
You want to come on up and do it? Yes. You want me to read? I can read. OK. Can I read your handwriting? Can we start with that? Um, it took 30 hours or so to build the con networks. Uh, we had th 30 attendees, seven staff, and five vendors. Actually, we had a few fewer vendors this year in labs than in years past. Um, and Terrasis does pretty much bring everything. They have 15 switches and 33 APs with one Wi-Fi. Deployed 50 total, so we have like APs. Oh, so we have a lot of redundant APs. And they even, it's funny, because I used to like hoard those little eight port switches. And like they just had like a box of those little bastards because they were always required. And then like last year I walked in and they were just in Terrasis switches everywhere. And I'm like, my switches are crying. Can you do something with them? They feel really bad, you know? <laughs> Went out to Staples and bought all the cheapest, crappiest switches I could find. Um, we had uh, uh, Airtight running the, the whips uh, with eight sensors. Uh, Palo Alto was running Firewall. Right, that's what they make. Uh, we had some, <laughs> I'm sorry for the Palo Alto rep in the room. You guys make firewalls. I bow to it. There we go. I said it. <laughs> Hate myself for that. Um, Cisco's Aces for streaming. Is that how we're doing rate limiting? Look at him jump. He's spry for his age. So, yeah, no kidding. I'm older than him. So, Palo Alto, everything is going through the Palo Alto, all the attendees, vendors, sponsors, speakers. Uh, but the streaming and part of CTF, which is now in the cloud, is going through another. Um, you mean it's firewall. on the internet? So, yeah, it's in the cloud. Christ. If you go to labs, you'll see a cable going up that's going to the cloud. <laughs> So yeah, so we have two file, we have two IPs, external IPs. So streaming is important, so you can, you can watch it from home. So that's it. Cool. Um, there are 30 different VLANs. Man, we like to segment. Uh, <laughs> uh, we had a 20 meg uplink, which costs a lot of money from the hotel. Uh, you think they make money on coffee service? You see what they make on internet. Uh, what what's the bill? Give or take. Twelve thousand dollars. Twelve thousand dollars for 20 meg service for three days. Somebody, one of the, one of the um, B-Sides DC folks, I don't know if they're here, um, they're over there, they were asking us yesterday, like, you know, how do you get cheap internet from the hotel? We like, we don't. <laughs> we're, we're just damn lucky that we have the money to cover it, because otherwise, we would be internetless, and we would have Louise be in the cloud, and you could ask him Google questions, and he would tell you. <laughs> how do I pop a shell on a free BSD box? Um, uh, C colon backslash, wait. Um, Anywho, uh, IPv6, something, something. Okay, that's the last. Um, On-site registration. So it went smoothly after the first five minutes. Um, I think we had a few hiccups with the QR codes. Um, but it, we, was, it was literally fixed in five minutes. It was literally fixed in five minutes, but it was different. And it, I think, you know, when we test it in the office and in our houses and things, it works. And then you get here and people have printed out. One guy had something that looked like he printed out, like, on a... HP 500 that was on an earthquake table. He's like, this is as clean as I could get it to print. I'm like, with what? Like, I don't understand what's happened. Um, you know, and the phone scanned well on some machines and the paper scanned well on others. We gotta sort that out. But I think for the most part, the QR code worked out pretty well. QR readers are scary. Are these optical readers? Do some research on them, man. Like, cause they read every barcode type known to mankind. They're configured through barcodes. Shh, whatever, people are going to figure it out. When you want them to accept control characters, you scan a barcode that says accept control characters. What? So, <laughs> here, check this one first. Does it work? Nope. Okay, try this one. <laughs> it's terrible. And, and Todd and some of the other guys spent a long time trying to lock these things down. Lock down your barcode readers. It's frightening. Like, why the hell do I live in a time that this has to be an issue? You know? <laughs> You know, I know you can put like malicious QR codes to like take the people with their phones to malicious websites. I'm like, I'm just gonna go old, um, own Old Navy or something. Like, you know, like this is insane. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> um, yeah, damn, damn it. Um, the uh, uh, reg staff really has this down. You know, wash, rinse, repeat. They just handed out the things. We still were up to about six uh, or a person every six seconds, uh, give or take, through there. So we moved the line pretty quick once we got up to full tilt. Um, and we do roll those t-shirts in advance. We go down to my office, we sit around, we drink some beers, eat some pizza, and roll t-shirts. Because it's a lot easier to take a t-shirt that's been rolled with a size on it than it is to go through a frickin' bunch of shirts and try to find it. So, uh, you know, it's little things like that. That's a whole day of prep. 
to get ready so that it runs smoothly here. We literally move everything down to the office, print all this stuff, cut it, people descend upon the office, we make this whole progression of you know, people do, we folding. We call it a party. Uh, we, we call it a party to make people convinced that it's a good time. Uh, <laughs> And, and we bring beer. And, and, and we bring beer, but it's a lot of volunteer work so that when you walk in and you hand us 15 bucks, we hand you a t-shirt and you're back on with your life. And it seems like a small thing when it happens to you, but you got to realize, again, there's a lot of volunteer time that goes in the backside to make it happen. And I think that's one of the things that kind of struck me this year. We were ahead of the game when it came to prep, but it's because we were spending a lot of time early on prep, 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 being ready for the event. So. Um, we're streaming video again. I think the third, fourth year we're doing this. We've gotten good. We've tested it. We need backups. Like we got laptops ready in case our normal laptops die. Uh, we're using. Uh, we didn't have that last year. So. <laughs> no, no, we didn't. Uh, we got lucky. We did get lucky this year. We were ready. Uh, we use Flash Media Encoder to stream to UStream. Um, and and to be clear, um, UStream I think used to archive the stuff for free or whatever. I don't really know. Um, we always host our own videos. We rip them ourselves. We put them on our website. We don't put them on YouTube. We don't give the money to Google to add or whatever. But on that uh, note. On, on what note? On the. Um, the uh, DVD note. Oh, on the DVD note, uh, please buy Ted DVD, Ted's DVDs. He's here. He drives across the country. That's how he makes his money. Also, note that Ted's DVDs are not free. Um, we know we had a few people go, oh, DVDs, and walk by and snag them. I think it was an innocent mistake. If you've inadvertently done that, please go throw some money at Ted. Preferably make it rain, because you should see Ted dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, Uh-oh. <laughs> maybe, maybe not, but it's, it's interesting. Um, we supply, supply our own security staff, and we're not talking like, you know, tasers and stuff, but, you know, it's our own people who walk around and, and make sure everything's okay, things are accounted for, people have badges on. Shenanigan level is relatively low. Um, I think it's because we, you know, it's all the show of force that we have. I don't know. Maybe we're just all nice people. You know, we're not the, the hacker cons we used to be. Um, we have had a lot of success in not delineating security from other staff. And I know some conferences, their security and their staff. Um, we feel very strongly that everybody's just staff. Um, and it's worked for us. But I think part of it may be we don't have a very rowdy crowd, you know, so there's a need to go. Let's keep it that way. Yeah, let's keep it that way. I appreciate it. Uh, we rent radios from a local vendor. It's At some point we thought about buying them, but it's just, it's pretty cheap to rent radios. They deliver them to the hotel and pick them up from our house. We don't even have to think about them. They handle everything. So there's, there's the radio right there, Ashley. Thank you, Louise. Um, all contests came back. Um, uh, we did something different with the badge contest? Mm -hmm. Is that the same from last year, different or different, different? You'll find out at closing. Shh. Um, how many people participated in any contest? Any? At all? Did you enjoy it? You want to see them again next year? You like them? I mean, I think that one of the things that happened this year is our, our contests were a little bit um, more reachable, I think, for some folks. Um, in the past, some of them have been difficult. If you looked at the Schmookonography opening when they were flipping through all the things, like I think it was like Schmookonography 2011 was the most mind-bending series of dots that you had to connect to make that thing work. Like he explained it to me once and I was like, shut up. Like really? <laughs> That's what it's supposed to be? Um, it was only marginally more difficult in the year that we gave punch cards to people as a badge, but they weren't readable, so you had to actually enter in all the dots onto something else and there were like 16 designs that drove people nuts you know who solved that darth null like but how many how many years later like three years, three years. <laughs> no but still oh. come on now like the fact that i could believe what he said that like oh here's a solution i was like holy shit! i forgot all about that i'm surprised no one killed us um vendors and sponsors we had 32 sponsors um, this year, including labs. So the labs, when, the, when they give us gear, we just consider them a, a, a bronze sponsor? They're, they're a lab sponsor. They're a lab sponsor. They're a lab sponsor. Um, and so they, they get uh, signage on the back of the um, things, and they get on the labs banner and stuff, and we you know, recognize their contribution here. They get um, super exposure within the labs. They do get a lot of exposure in the labs. It works very well from a hands-on perspective. Um, the uh, bronze level sponsorships are reserved for only small businesses. Um, and we've had a, a few businesses that have grown. We've shepherded them to other sponsorship levels to say, we know you're bigger than this. Like, go forth, buy a silver. Um, and it's worked out well. Um, and we're serious about that. I mean, you know, you can get, small businesses can get their name on the same placard that, you know, big defense contractors are in this conference. And we are pretty passionate about getting that exposure to folks. That said, we still limit sponsorship. We have a luxury. We have two, we have two amazing luxuries running this con. We know we're going to sell out. And we know we're going to get Let's more. Let's not change that either. Let's not change that. And we know we know we're going to get more sponsorship uh, um, uh, interest than we can deal with, right? 
it doesn't get any better. We recognize it. We recognize that we can take all kinds of risks and do all kinds of crazy things and, and not stress about the money because we know y'all are going to show up and the sponsors are falling over themselves to sponsor the place. And I know there's other conferences that aren't that lucky and people ask us, how do you do it? Nothing, I have nothing for you. I'm sorry. We just, it started out well the first time and it just kept going, you know, and that's how it worked. And there was no secret sauce. We just, attention to detail. Everything you see here has resulted in what's happening. So, um, you know, we're going to uh, continue to push for the sponsors to do something different. Um, you know, again, there's lots of interesting things going on at the booths. I encourage you to go around, et cetera, et cetera. Um, last slide. I know they're waving furiously in the back and the people online are probably like, slowly trailing off um, feedback so I think we lost them a long time we probably did uh, so uh, the feedback interface is up this year it's a little bit reworked um, uh, we encourage you use it or if you don't want to use the website you always can just email you can always email and we're crappy about email uh, especially leading up to the con after the con we tend to get a little bit better about responding um, but even then you know we have jobs <laughs> sit kids sometimes Things just happen, and we apologize if we don't get back to you. And you feel free to harass us. Like, if you ping us again, say, hello. Plus Facebook. Yeah, so, why sorry. Is this, why is it Schmooball on the list? What? Is it Schmooball feedback for you? It is, but it's, not, it's, it's kind of temporal. You know, it doesn't really last, except for the scar. You may see it right there. Yeah, the PTSD. Clearly, like, I, I obviously have some therapy I need to be going to, because I don't flinch that bad on anything. I mean, I was, on the, I was getting ready to fall on the ground. Um, you scared me? I, I scared myself. Um, we take it real serious. You know, we take the feedback real serious. We try to put on the best event we can. You know, this is all about transparency, right? I mean, I don't think you can get much more open than this. We're not going to invite you into our email list to plan the thing because nothing will get done. But beyond that, I'm not sure how we could be more open. Um, I encourage you to, if you're running events, um, share information when you can. CFP information is really useful. I know that like we share that and other conferences share that and it gets a lot of value to people to get the CFP information out. Um, you know, financial information is useful. But even if you can't share it, just learn, try to, you know, soak up what you can from us and other people because um, we do this to try to help, help you guys. So, um, real quick, are there any questions on this? What? Slides will be up on the website. The video will be on the I website have as well. I received one set of slides so far. So I think you meant the, these slides. These slides will be on the website. Yeah. No, West Steve? Point didn't show up this year. Uh, West Point. Well, so um, yes, they're here. They're here. You didn't have them on there. Your staff page. Because we, um, they are on there. They're just counted differently. And usually we, um, I, in the past, they've just given me a check that I haven't even issued barcodes because they show up in a big group. But because of how they came this year, I actually issued barcodes. So they are in there, but they didn't need to be special. But they all, are special. All the service academies were represented here this year, um, uh, Air Force, uh, Naval, and uh, USMA. Um, and even in the face of sequestration and, um, they got here. and the travel restrictions and all that, which if you're in DOD or the government, you know about, um, it's still cadets taking their own time, spending their own money to come here you know, to not only protect our nation, but to actually try to learn and come down here. So, And they got off coast, too. I mean, you know, there's some, some selfishness, I think, of not being in the they wilderness of New York. Hot, and they can wear their civvies. So, you know, I, there's some good sides. But, uh, but in fairness, I mean, they, they persevere, and it's great to have them here. And it's great to have everybody here that, you know, again, I, we were talking to a reporter earlier. I'm like, it's a group of people that show up on a weekend to come to D.C. and hang out with a bunch of other sweaty it people wearing black t-shirts. It has nothing to do with the and, alcohol. And it has nothing to do with the alcohol. <laughs> uh, you know, you, we're dedicated. I mean, to sit through me talking about this nonsense for an hour, I mean, you, you care. So go forth and do better than we did. That's all we ask you to do. So anyway, with that, uh, 8 o'clock, see you at the party. No, you won't. I won't. You won't.